Welcome back. We are here looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. This is going to be my daily forecast for Tuesday, July 20, 2021. If you like to support the channel, you're going to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner. Hit the like button and the bell button to see our new videos. And we'll stop by looking at the US dollar index. So there's a massive change in the market that is quite apparent at this point. US dollar is continuing to strengthen. It uh, did reach above the top of the Bollinger Band up towards um, 29. 20 uh, no 93 sorry and then broke down just a little bit but we're still closing above the 300 moving average which is uh, fairly bullish macd is uh, flat at this point stochastic is right on the signal line and the rsi is flat and if we get another candlestick here tomorrow then it's more likely that we are going to test these uh, previous highs here up at 93.45 and then beyond that there are other signs that the market in general is about to turn and um, US dollar index is just one of those signs. So we are also most likely going to have a crossing of the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average in the next few days. And uh, that kind of means that the next few months or probably next year, we will see this gradually grind higher. So let's look at oil. So oil fell off a cliff today. I think I said it yesterday that we'll probably find a massive support down here, but I didn't expect this to drop this fast. So it is a kind of perfect storm for um, oil at this moment, as OPEC is basically going to add supply into the market. And um, then we have basically another round of COVID. And uh, that usually is not a good cocktail for, for the oil market. But uh, if we look at... Um, the Fibonacci retracements for the oil market, we can see that we are approaching 61.8 and drop below here. And we're most likely going to drop to 60 and probably the 200 moving average all the way down to roughly uh, roughly uh, 56 or uh, 57, give or take. That is uh, fairly likely at this point. However, we are getting very overstretched. So we're way underneath the... Uh, bottom of the bullish band so rally up towards 70 that is uh, also fairly likely at the, this current stage macd is very bearish the stochastic is very bearish and so is the rsi but we are approaching oversold conditions as well in the rsi if you look at the weekly for example for oil we can also see that we got to the same level where we were roughly in 2018 around 75 give or take and then we fell all the way down towards 43 so just keep that in mind this is not unusual for this market to get to these levels and then just completely fall apart and um, that was due to a tweet and this was mainly due to economic and uh, economic uh, um, uh, reasons that the supply is probably going to increase and that the demand for oil is could basically be um, yeah, decreasing with time if uh, COVID really becomes a problem again right, for the world economy. So at this point, we could drop all the way down to 60, but due to the fact that we are so overstretched at this current stage, we could see this rally up towards the 50 moving average or the $70 level before going, continuing down. So let's look at natural gas. So natural gas did rally uh, up roughly more than 2%. We got to the same level. We are trading at the 3.745 at this point. And uh, if we manage to take out these uh, candlestick here, then we are most likely going to the top of the bullish band, which is at 3.89 at this current stage. MACD is still bearish. The Kasik is also bearish and the RSI is, uh, is bullish at this point. But these two indicators are turning around. So... Momentum is to the upside, and we're just doing the same thing that we have been doing for a very long time now. And that is basically bouncing out the 20 exponential. You did bounce here, and uh, if we manage to take out this level here, then we are going to go higher. So let's look at copper. Yes, copper is approaching the previous lows here, and if we manage to break above uh, beneath that, then we are dropping to four. And then the 200 moving average and then question is whether or not we drop below the 200 moving average and that kind of is a signal that this rally here 
is basically coming to an end. If the world economy is slowing down yet again and the US dollar continues to appreciate, that of course will work against uh, uh, against copper. We have a crossing here, most likely of the, uh, the MACD, stochastic is bearish and so is RSI. So momentum is definitely to the downside. We are at the bottom of the bullish band, so we could see a rally up towards the middle before continuing lower. So let's look at gold. So gold was fairly all over the place today. Uh, we did gap down a little bit and then we dropped all the way down to 70, 1794, uh, the middle of the bullish band and then rallied just above the 20 exponential. But at this current stage, it's more likely that we are going to see a continuation of this decline here. Uh, probably will stabilize around this area. But if you look at technical indicators, we can see the MAC, uh, stochastic is bearish, the RSI is bearish, and MACD is really leveling off here. And just above, we have a lot of moving averages. Getting towards uh, these moving averages here will offer massive resistance. And uh, if we were to take out these candlesticks here, roughly 70, uh, 1750, then we're most likely going to drop towards 1677, and then probably all the way down to 1500 if this really um, falls apart. If you take out 50 moving average, then we could be going towards 1900. So let's look at silver. So silver fell off a cliff today. It gapped down and then it broke down all the way down to where we ended up at 2512. Technical indicators, we can see the MACD is bearish, the Kansas is bearish and the RSI is bearish, but we are approaching oversold conditions and we are very uh, overstretched here in the bullish band. So a rally up towards the 200 moving average, that could be possible. And as it was massive resist in the past, it will most likely be support in the past, it will most likely be resistant now. At the moment, it looks like 25 and then the 200 moving, uh, 300 moving average at 24.60, it will be the next target here. So let's look at platinum. Yes, Platinum also gapped down really hard and then dropped significantly, ending up at 1073. And if you look at technical indicators, we can see the MACD is really turning around in negative territory. So stochastic is bearish and so is the RSI. So this has a, had a really nice run up towards the 50, found massive support and then bang. And this is also a continuation of the same moves up towards the 50, 20, and then just breaking down so at this current stage, if we break below this candlestick here, which is at 1033, then the 300 moving average comes into play, break below the fifth uh, 300, then we have 1.000 that comes into play. And then after that, much, much lower levels. So we have been falling, continuing falling in, in this direction. And if you look at Fibonacci retracements for this market, and we basically see that the 61.8 is right here at the 300 moving average. So break below here, then we are dropping all the way down to 822 around that area. So let's look at Pallium. So Pallium also gapped lower. I think I said yesterday we were going to test the 200 moving average. I didn't think that we were going to test it this soon. And uh, yes, this was a horrible... If you were buying, uh, had uh, bought here, then this was a horrible day for you. So it gapped down towards uh, 2641 uh, and then dropped all the way down to 2568 and then uh, rallied a little bit, ending up at 2595. Um, if you look at the MACD, you can see that across the signal line here, stochastic is also bearish and so is our RSI. 2200 moving average has offered support in the past and the question is whether or not we bounce from there or we just completely fall below the 200 moving average and head towards the previous lows here 24 50 uh, 58 and then the 300 moving average at 2391 but at this moment this looks horrible for this market in general so let's look at aluminium so aluminium as well gapped lower and then just dropped and there's no pullback at the end of uh, of the session and that is not a very good sign usually that means that 
people are basically selling at the end of the session and there's no little or less no buying at the end of the session. Technically, the others are all bearish at this point, but we need to break below 23.35 in order to go to 22.50 and then the 200 moving average down here at 21.51. The upside, there is not a lot of upside at this current stage. So let's look at nickel. So nickel uh, rallied and then basically broke down. So we went to the top of the bull range. It looks really strange, but we did rally above the, the uh, top of the bullish band and then broke down and found the support just above the 20 exponential. Technical indicators are all turning around at this point. MACD is crossed the signal lines. The Kasek has crossed here, and so is the RSI very bearish. So if we drop below here, then a 50 comes into play. And then all the way down to the 200 moving average at 17,000. Uh, 17, so yes, it's a horrible day, but we did see a similar move uh, only a few weeks ago. We dropped below the 50 and then we rallied. We saw it also here and then we rallied. So it could be that we're just doing the same thing as we have been doing in the last few months. So let's look at sugar. Yes, the sugar market uh, didn't go really well today either. So we did rally up towards uh, 0 0.1775 and then dropped all the way down to 17.14. MACD is bearish, stochastic is bearish, and so is the RSI. At this point, we are just below the middle of the bullish band. So drop below these candlesticks here. That could drop this all the way down to the very bottom of the bullish band at 16.19. So let's look at, uh, at cotton, sorry. So cotton, yes, also fell off a cliff today. Ended up at this uh, 87.01 and um, yeah, boy, we are probably just going to see the, we're still in the uptrend technically. So if we may basically break below this trend line here, then we are going to test the 50 moving average in the bottom of the bullish band. And then we could drop towards the 200 moving average at 80.32. Um, there's not a lot of room to the upside of this current stage as some technical indicators are all pointing to lower levels and we have broken the middle of the bullish band and we could, we're most likely going to test the 50 moving average first before. If we find support here, then we can bounce, but break below here, then we are going significantly lower, most likely. So let's look at Kokoa. So Kokoa. Uh, definitely uh, broke uh, a few barriers here today. So we gapped down uh, and then we fell hard. Basically tested these previous lows here and found support in that area. So break below here, uh, which uh, probably won't be yet because we are so overstretched and on the edge of being oversold that we'll mostly have a rally up towards the 2300 before going lower. Uh, we are still in a downtrend, <laughs> definitely in a downtrend, and the break below, uh, significantly below here, then we are looking at the 2086, which is the previous lows from last year, maybe a year ago. So that's kind of where most likely we'll end up in the coming weeks. So let's look at wheat. So wheat market, it gapped really, uh, <laughs> and then we pull back a little bit. So this is getting really overstretched and uh, pull back towards uh, the 20, 50 moving average. That could be possible, but but uh, yes, a massive move to the upside and uh, ended up roughly at seven uh, 700. If you look at technical indicators, we can see the MACD is bullish, the Kansas is bullish and the RSI is bullish. Still a lot of room to the upside, but we are way outside of the bullish band and usually that means that we'll break towards support, which we can find in the 50 or the middle of the bullish band down here at 650, give or take. So, hope you find yourself You're willing to support your channel by subscribing and hit the like button and the bell button to see our new studios. And good luck and thank you very much.